uh, based on you know a comment that I got, uh, a reply to one of the comments that I had in a separate video that I left a comment on. Um, uh, uh, the person asked, you know, if I could make a video talking about you know my journey to Islam and why I chose Islam. Um, first and foremost, uh, my my journey to Islam has been amazing. It's been great. It's been full of knowledge. Um, uh, what initially you know brought that decision on is I've told this to many a family because of course I'm sure that a lot of people you know whenever you make a major decision um, on your life whether it's religion based or anything like that you know once people start to see a change in you they start to you know ask questions they want to know you know how did you get into this or what made you do this and all these kind of things um, really what sparked you know what what brought that on to me was the fact of my legit answer to everyone was not I was tired of running from myself meaning there were so many things on my heart and so many things that I've never let go of you know from childhood all the way up to now a lot of things I've, I've never gotten over I've never um, addressed or confronted in order to you know move forward I pretty much just let that linger into my heart and as men Western society, I would say, where we're always taught and brought up to, you know, shove your emotions down and never express them. In some form or fashion, it's always been been looked at as, you know, a sign of toughness when we have emotions just as strong as women, but we're taught to suppress them. And the more you do that throughout your life, you're causing yourself harm. You're doing yourself more more harm than you are doing good. And you know, I just hit a breaking point to where. I was so tired and so sick of, of not confronting myself or let alone other people that, you know, I I prayed, I prayed to God. And this is pre-Islam. I, I prayed to God because I've always believed there was only one creator, always. Um, you know, that's with growing up Christian and, and those kind of things. Um, so, you know, I prayed to God. I was full of tears, just, you know, just, just letting my heart fully open. And like a day or two later one of the brothers who, who uh, the brother who was you know giving me my shahada he just wanted to come by just randomly just wanted to come by you know we got to talking we got you know the small talk out of the way you know how you been how's the kids how's how's the family blah blah, blah all this kind of stuff now granted we are family we are a legit family born and raised family we're like my mother and his father brother and sister We've grown up like brothers. So, you know, there's always a natural concern for people that you've always been around. You know, you get to tell when, you can tell when things are bothering them or something's up and blah, blah, blah. And I was a person that on the inside, I'm crying, but on the outside, I'm full of laughter, I'm full of joy. And so that ties into me, you know, running from myself. Um, you know, we started talking about Islam. And the more we talked about it, the more interesting it became. And, you know, he asked me about taking my shahada, and I, I gave some bullcrap excuse, right? And it's just being honest, I gave some excuse as to why. And then the second time, like two days later, he came back by again. Got the small talk out of the way. We got to talk about Islam again. And whenever we would talk about Islam, we would talk about it for about five hours straight, like just different things. And then at the end, he would always be like, you know, hey, brother, why, why, why won't you take your shahada? Like, why won't you go ahead and do it? And I was more like, like, nah, because of blah, blah, blah. I gave another excuse. Like, you know, it's hard to, you know, break this, break this 33-year-old curse. Like, this is all I've ever known. This is all I've ever, this is all I was ever taught. You know, it's kind of hard to pull away from it and just go straight into something else when you've always taught and believed that this was the truth. You know, he respected it. You know, he gave me the, the, the confirmation of you're not necessarily walking away from anything. You're just stepping into what is true what is actually true still gave an excuse though third time which i've always looked at it like if things happen in threes it's supposed to you know there's some divine purpose there that at least that's what i used to believe i don't know yet if in islam you know that still reigns true or not but third time he came same type of thing small talk islam small talk would literally last maybe 10 minutes maybe 15 minutes then go straight into islam and at the end of it all, you know, I end up coming clean and I end up telling him, like, you know what, a lot of things have been bothering me for years, ever since we were children, we grew up together, and blah, 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 blah. And then he asked me about taking a shot at it, and I said yes. 
And when I really tell you, once I took my Shahada, was sitting inside of my living room in my apartment, and there's a fireplace that's, you know, right up underneath my TV on the mantel. And after I took Shahada, and he was sitting right beside me, I just stared off, like, like not even on purpose. I just found myself staring, like just in one spot. Never even looked at him. Did, can't tell you what he was talking to me about afterwards. I just hit a state of just pureness, like not emptiness, but I was blank. Like I found myself trying to formulate a thought, like trying to think of something, and I couldn't. It's it, it's almost like. Allah took all of those thoughts that I would naturally have that, that, you know, became the way my brain operated because I've convinced myself that this is how we operate. It's like he took everything that I would think about that would, you know, veer off into anything negative or, or anything like that. Our brains run, I'll say about 99% of the time that we're awake. And mo the majority of the thoughts you have, you don't think of them they just happen I really found myself trying to have a thought and I couldn't and the entire time he was talking to me I just felt so peaceful just like this is this is I'm, I'm, I'm back to square one day one and I was told that it's like you know once you took your shahada it's like all of your bad deeds were made into good deeds and all your good deeds still reign as good deeds you're back to day one square one back when you were a baby there's nothing impure about you it, everything now is what you make it and that was such a relieving statement to me I, I, I really I don't know it, it did so much for me and then going from that to you know I went to the masjid the very next day didn't even know the masjid was where it was the place that I've gone past so many times in my life didn't even know it was there started going there started meeting people started getting such a warm embrace from brothers and sisters that were there um had people you know that wanted to you know give me this or give me that like having the embrace of a family that's not your you know I guess you could say biological family in our eyes it was it was a beautiful thing it was a beautiful feeling and and may Allah bless every single brother and sister that I've met they don't speak ill of people they're very, uh, they're very concerned about every brother and sister. Want to make sure you're doing okay. Do you need anything? When, if you have children, you bring children around. Like they're extremely attentive to the children. They embrace the children. Like it's it's such a beautiful uh, community. And um, you know, hopefully that answers the initial question. Um, and as far as my journey, like I've been reading the Quran every day. At least try to read a page a day. But I always find myself that once I pick it up, I can't put it down. And once I, you know, finally do put it down, because, you know, maybe I need rest or anything like that, I always just linger and remember all everything that I just read. Because I would love to hit the point where I could actually memorize the Quran. That would be amazing. Inshallah, that, that will happen. But, um, man, it's just, it just been so beautiful. And with this being the month of Ramadan, and this is day 17... I think I think it's 17 even Ramadan has been beautiful I don't but there's no temptation when it comes to food and drink of course there's still things that you know you want to try to you know do better I won't say perfect but you want to do better um, it's all it's all a, a learning curve You're, uh, Allah is, is guiding me throughout this entire uh, journey and this will continue to be a journey inshallah for the rest of my days um you know, if you guys have any questions or comments or anything like that, you know, you can just leave them, leave them down in the comment section. Um, you know, trying to get these subscribers up to 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 push the message from Allah through. You know, the way the message was was brought through the messengers. Like, just the Islam community is just absolutely beautiful. Like, I find myself like random times throughout the day just sitting, think about Islam, and my my heart gets warm. It's just like. I, I absolutely love this and you know it took a it took a very long time which I'm 34 now it took a very long time for me to get to the truth but once you look at 
everything from before and you see the journey it, it makes it even that much more worth it um like i said hopefully i answered you guys questions uh, i will be making uh, more videos uh, before ramadan is over i plan to make another video during Eid. um you know i will see you guys in the next video assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh